Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Amma ba'd Continue reading what Al-Hafidh Al-Zahabi He mentioned Rahimahullah Ta'ala In the Tarjamah of Abi Abdullah Muhammad Ibn Ismail Al-Bukhari Rahimahullah Ta'ala We have seen that the author he is mentioning what the people of knowledge have said about him, rahimahullah, from the praise, and that he was a person of knowledge and a person of memorization and understanding, and that likewise, Abu Khari, rahimahullah, he was a person of piety uh, and righteousness, rahimahullah. We see here that uh, in our previous class, some of the praises of Al Imam Muslim for his great teacher. Al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala and the author he continues and he mentions wa qala Abu Isa wa qala Abu Isa at-Tirmidhi and he also from the great students of Al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala Abu Isa Muhammad ibn Isa at-Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala sahibu jami at-Tirmidhi he said lam ara bil iraqi wa la bi khurasan fi ma'na al-ilali wa tarikhi wa ma'rifat al-asanir a'lama min Muhammad ibn Ismail he said, uh, Tirmidhi, he mentioned about the Bukhari, Rahimahum Allah, that I have not seen, not in Iraq, and not in Khurasan, anyone that had more knowledge of the hidden defects of the narrations, and likewise the history of the narrators, and the knowledge of the chains, and more. I haven't seen anyone in these affairs more knowledgeable than Muhammad ibn Ismail, Rahimahum Allah Ta'ala. Likewise, Tirmidhi, he says, Qala Muhammad ibn Ismail, عند عبد الله بن منير الترمذي he says كان محمد ابن إسماعيل عند عبد الله بن منير that Bukhari رحمه الله تعالى he was with عبد الله بن منير who took him in the previous class who remembers him عبد الله بن منير from the greatest of the مشايخ of Al Bukhari and Bukhari mentioned about him لم أرى مثله لم أرى مثله عبد الله بن منير he is from those uh, mashayikh that al-Bukhari he narrated on in Sahih al-Bukhari and he said about himself in the Abdullah ibn Munir Anna min tadamidi Muhammad ibn Ismail he's the one who mentioned and he, he said I'm from the students uh, of al-Bukhari and in, and in reality he was from the teachers of al-Bukhari rather al-Bukhari he narrated on him and he, in his uh, authentic collection Sahih al-Bukhari so uh, uh, at Tirmidhi, he's mentioning here that Bukhari, he was in the gathering of, of, of Abdullah ibn Munir. Of Abdullah ibn Munir. So he says, فَلَمَّا قَامَ مِنْ عِنْدِهِ قَالَ لَهُ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ جَعَلَكَ اللَّهُ زَيْنَ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ And whenever he stood up to leave, his shaykh, he said to him, يعني Abdullah ibn Munir, he mentioned to Al-Bukhari, O Aba Abdullah, may Allah make you the beauty and the adornment of this ummah. May Allah make you the adornment and the beauty of this ummah. And the adornment and the zain uh, of this ummah. At this time, at Tirmidhi, he says, Ustajiba lahu fihi. Ustajiba lahu fihi. That, that this supplication of his shaykh for his student was accepted for him. Meaning that Bukhari, he was and the adornment of the ummah and the beauty uh, of the ummah. And he from the knowledge and the, uh, and the benefit that he, that he left behind. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Al-Dhahabi, he, he mentioned the benefit with regards to that, that shaykh. Abdullah ibn Munir that he died in the same year as the Imam Ahmed when was that? 241 241 MashaAllah after this yani, uh, we continue to summarize yani, taking from a little bit here and there Al-Dhahabi uh, he mentions now another chapter title he says ذِكْرُ عِبَادَتِهِ وَفَضْلِهِ وَوَرَعِهِ وَالصَّلَاحِهِ the mention of his worship and the worship of Al-Bukhari and his virtue and also his piety and his fear of Allah and the fact that he was upon rectification and goodness. So it's mentioned here that they said, كان محمد بن إسماعيل يختم في رمضان في النهار كل يوم الختمة ويقوم بعد التراويح كل ثلاث ليال بختمة. That Al-Bukhari رحمه الله تعالى in Ramadan he used to every single day complete the Quran. He used to recite the Quran from the beginning to the end every single day in the daytime of Ramadan. And as for in the nighttime after Taraweeh, every three nights he would complete it. And he in standing in prayer. So he was someone who was busy with this affair. And no doubt the Quran should 
not be completed in less than seven or three days in the life cycle. This is outside. This is outside of Ramadan. As for Ramadan, the people of knowledge, they mentioned to, to read it as much as one can. So therefore, this is not conflicting uh, with uh, that which has been prescribed in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Al-Bukhari, he says, Arju an alqa allaha, arju an alqa allaha, wa la yuhasibuni anni iktabtu ahadan. He said that I hope, I have hopes in Allah that I will meet him, and Allah will not hold me to account for backbiting anyone. For backbiting anyone, that I have not backbitten anyone. And uh, Al-Dhahabi, he says, Qala sadaqa rahimuhullah, wa man nadhara fi karamihi fajarhu tadil, alima wara'ahu fil karami fil nas. وَانْصَافَهُ فِي مَنْ يُضَعِفُهُ فَإِنَّهُ أَكْثَرُ مَا يَكُورُ مُنْكَرُ الْحَدِيثِ وَوْسَكَتُ عَنْهُ وَفِيهِ نَذَرُ وَنَحْوَ هَذَا So uh, Al-Bukhari, he says, I hope that I will meet Allah Azza wa Jal and he will not hold me to account for backbiting anyone for backbiting anyone. We know that from the first of the scholars of hadith to author a work with regards to the issues of Jahwa Ta'deel and collecting the names of the narrators and mentioning about them, whether they're weak or whether they're strong or whether they're corrupt or whether they're pious and, they're, and the likes like this, and he's saying about them, this one is diqa, and this one is da'if, and this one yani, w w was known for lying, and this one he was this, and this one he was that. Yani, the first to do that, or from the first to do that and to write in this manner was Al-Bukhari himself, rahimahullah ta'ala. But he does not find that he's backbiting any of them. Rather, this is an obligation that was upon the people of knowledge. So he said this about himself. al Dhahabi he comments, rahimahullah, and he says, Verily, he told the truth. May Allah have mercy on him. And the one who looks into the speech and to the statements of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, with regards to Al-Jarh, wa Ta'adil, yani criticizing and, uh, and praising the, the narrators and the likes, they will find that he had the most pious of speech and then he, he was very far from uh, being, uh, being uh, corrupt or falling into oppression. And he was just in that affair. And those who he considered to be weak, whatever the reason may be. And uh, the most that he would say, munkar al-hadith, and that his hadith is munkar, it's not accepted, it's rejected. Or sakatu anhu, or they, they, they were silent about him. Ofihi nadar, and he, this person here, he's not reliable. He's not reliable. And, and the likes like this. And Adhahab, uh, uh, he says, وَقَلَّ أَنْ يَقُولُ فُرَانٌ كَذَابٌ أَوْ كَانَ يَضَعُ الْحَدِيثِ And only rarely would he say, only rarely would he say, so-and-so was a liar, or so-and-so used to fabricate narrations. And he mentioning the issue of Al-Bukhari, what he was known for, is that he was very precise in selecting the terms and the words that he used. And many of the, of the narrators, they will, they will speak with uh, words that, that are direct and that are harsh, and especially for the person who deserves it. They will say, so-and-so is a liar. So-and-so used to fabricate. So-and-so is weak. So-and-so memory is nothing. So-and-so is like this. <laughs> he's air. He's nothing. He has no value. So-and-so a lot like this. But this is because of, uh, of the, 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 either the innovation that they were involved in or the fact that they were not from the people of knowledge and they stepped into that arena and they spoke in affairs that did not concern them and they spoke without knowledge and they narrated narrations that were weak and, and the likes like this and they, uh, and, and they were criticized for that because this is an arena of knowledge and, affair, and, a, and a, great, a great affair and speaking about uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his narrations is speaking about the deen of Allah and ascribing to the, some, something to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is ascribing something to the legislation of Allah from the halal and the haram and the likes like this so this is a very, uh, a very serious affair but uh, although those uh, people of knowledge who spoke in this manner they're excused in that and they have the right to do that and this is defense defense of the deen and this is not considered backbiting Al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala he was known for choosing the lightest words he was known for choosing the lightest words and the safest words that uh, would uh, keep him safe from being held accountable or any blame with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what he's, he's referring to. And he said, yani, uh, so Bukhari he used to say, yani, so-and-so, and -so, yani, he has another. You have to take a look into his affair, meaning he's not reliable. Meaning he's not reliable. Or they would say, he would say, sakatu anhu. Oh, they didn't, they didn't uh, mention anything about him like, like this. And uh, so Dhahabi, uh, he's mentioning either, uh, th that this is the case. The Bukhari, he said, إِذَا قُلْتُ فُلَانٌ فِي حَدِيثِهِ نَذَرْ فَهُوَ مُتَّهَمٌ وَاهِنٌ 
And the meaning that if I say that so and so in his narrations, you have to take a look at the meaning that they're not reliable, meaning that this individual is accused for lying and he is, he is severely weak. He's severely weak. So Bukhari, he would uh, be very diligent and uh, he would have piety whenever he chose the words that he chose to speak about the narrators. This is the point he's making here. So al Dhahabi says, this is what he's intending here. لا يحاسبني الله أني أكتبت أحدا and this is from, he says, وَهَذَا هُوَ وَاللَّهِ غَايَةُ الْوَرَعَ And this is from the peak uh, of piety and, and the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is from the peak of piety and the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. And people, they, uh, even still, they would complain uh, and claim that Bukhari, in his book, Tariq al-Kabir, Tariq al-Kabir, he was backbiting the people, and some of the people claimed that. And, and Bukhari, he defended himself, and he said, I didn't say none of that. Rather, I just transmitted what was mentioned about them. And he, I transmitted what was mentioned about them. And then he says, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, بِئْسَ مَوْلِ الْعَشِيرَةِ يَعْنِي حَدِيثَ عَائِشَةِ And he referring to the narration of Aisha, رضي الله عنها, whenever that man, he came uh, into the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and whenever he seen him coming, he said, oh, he's the worst of the people. He's the worst of his tribe's men. And then whenever he came in, يعني, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was kind to him, uh, and uh, took care of his need and in order to stay away from his evil. And he clarified the understanding of the people of Hadith that to speak about these affairs is not considered backbiting. Is not considered backbiting. And Bukhari, he says, And Bukhari, he said, I never backbite anybody ever since I realized and knew for sure that backbiting will harm the people who commit it. That backbiting will harm the, the people who commit it. We see in the, in the, from the greatest or the, the highest in chain of narration for the Mashaykh al-Bukhari, Abu, Abu Asim, al-Nabil, al-Dahaq ibn Makhlad, rahimahullah ta'ala. And also the same statement is found in his tarjama. He said, مَا قْتَبْتُ أَحَدٍ مُنْذُ أَقَلْتُ أَنَ الْغِيبَ حَرَامٍ He said, I never, I never backbit anybody ever since I realized and knew that backbiting was haram. So this is what uh, is apparent that he, he learned from his Mashaykh. That backbiting is haram, speaking ill, and finding fault with uh, the believers behind their backs and their lives like this, this is haram. As for defending the sunnah, speaking about the, the narrators, or warning from the people of innovation, and the lies like this, this is a whole other realm, and a whole other field, and this is an area that is incumbent, and for their religion to be clarified and to be defended, and the people of falsehood to be known, and the, li and the lies like this. So this is uh, the issue here that he's referring to. And this is not backbiting. This is not backbiting. It's mentioned here, كَانَ أَبُوْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَلَى يُصَلِّي فِي وَقْتِ السَّحَرْ ثَلَاثَ عَشَرَةَ الرَّكَعَ That Al-Bukhari, from his methodology in his daily affair, is that every day in the time of the Sahar, and in the last period of the night before Fajr, he used to pray 13 raka. He used to pray 13 raka. And so this is also from, uh, from his issue, Rahimahullah ta'ala, that he was not only a person of knowledge who was seeking knowledge, but also he was a person of ibadah and worship, and he was applying the knowledge. And he was applying the knowledge, Rahimahullah ta'ala. One of the people who narrated many of these narrations on Bukhari, his name is Muhammad ibn Abi Hatim, and he's known as Warraq al-Bukhari. He is the one who used to be the scribe and would copy the, 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 the writings of Bukhari and copy the, the, the narrations that he wrote. And he, so he's narrating many of these narrations. He mentions here, Duya Muhammad ibn Ismail, ila Bustan, ila Bustani ba'di ashabihi, falamma salla bil qawmi al-dhuhr, qama yatatawwa, falamma faraga min salatihi, rafa'a dhayla qamisihi, faqala li ba'di man ma'ahu, unzur, hal tara tahta qamisi shay'an, faitha zamburun, qad abra'ahu fi sitata ashara o sabata ashara mawdiyan, qala tawarrama min thalika jasaduhu, he mentions here that uh, at one time uh, Al-Bukhari, he was invited to uh, a gathering uh, with, one, uh, with some of his companions and they prayed Dhuhr there. They prayed Dhuhr there and after that, Bukhari, he got up and he started praying the non-obligatory Salat. And he was praying some time by himself. And then whenever he was finished, he came to them and he pulled up the, the, the tail of his, uh, he looked under, under his shirt, they said, he said, look back here, do you see anything? Do you see, do you see anything in my back? And uh, they looked and they seen, uh, they seen a wasp. They seen a wasp had bit him 16 or 17 times and his, and, his, and his body was swollen because of that. 
So فَقَالَ لَهُ بَعْضُ الْقَوْمِ Some of the people, they said to him, كَيْفَ لَمْ تَخْرُجْ مِنَ السَّرَاتِ أَوَّلَ مَا أَبْرَعَكَ How come you didn't leave from the prayer the first time you got stung? Yani he's in the prayer, he's been stung 16, 17 times. They're like, why didn't you stop praying the first time you got stung? And Bukhari, he says, كُنْتُ فِي سُورَةٍ فَأَحْبَبْتُ أَنْ أُتِمَّهَا فَأَحْبَبْتُ أَنْ أُتِمَّهَا He said, I was, re I was reciting a chapter and, and I like to finish it. And I wanted, I wanted to finish it. And he was able to bear this pain and, he, and, and not paying any attention to it because of his devotion, because of his devotion to worship. So here, the next uh, narration on him clarifies his affair. And in that uh, one of the narrators, uh, they mentioned uh, that the ulama, and that he heard the ulama in Basra saying, ما في الدنيا مثل محمد بن إسماعيل في المعرفة والصلاح That there is no one in the dunya. And in those days, there's no one in the dunya. And there's no one in the world that is at the level of Al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala with regards to understanding and rectification. With regards to understanding, with regards to al-ma'rifa, yani al-ilm, knowledge and understanding, and also as-salah, yani rectification and application. So this is a great point that the people of knowledge, they mention about him, that he was yani a person of knowledge and application, a person of knowledge and application. And in this manner, the knowledge, it is beneficial. The knowledge, it is, uh, it is beneficial. There are a number uh, of narrations we continue to read. Again, this one has proceeded. It's mentioned that Bukhari, he mentioned about himself. Rahimahullah uh, ta'ala kana yusalli rakatain inda kulli inda kulli tarjama. That he mentioned about himself that he used to pray two raka in every tarjama. And in every chapter title. Every chapter title in Sahih al-Bukhari. For every title. For every chapter that he made, uh, he would pray two raka. He would pray two raka istikhara. Uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hoping for guidance and assistance and acceptance from Allah azza wa jal from Allah azza wa jal so he was devoted uh, with sincerity and truthfulness and he was devoted uh, to knowledge and also to worship to knowledge and also to worship it's mentioned here uh, again another chain too Al-Firabri he says رَأَيْتُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ فِي النَّوْمِ فَقَالَ لِي أَيْنَ تُرِيدُ فقلت أريد محمد بن إسماعيل البخاري فقال اقرأ اقرأه مني السلام اقرأه مني السلام الفرابري he mentioned that he at one time he seen uh, the prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم in a dream and uh, the prophet asked him where are you going he said I'm going to Muhammad بن إسماعيل he said I'm going to Bukhari and he said that at this time the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told him to give him salam from me to give him Salam from me. We know that, again, the dreams, they're not something that one would establish a ruling from. But if someone, he sees a good dream, uh, then this is a good sign for him and glad tidings. Or if a good dream is seen from somebody, for a person, this is, this is uh, glad tidings, uh, inshallah, for that person and a good sign. Especially if it's affirmed that the one who was seen in the dream is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But not everybody who claims they saw the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in a dream really saw him. Really saw him. Only if they saw him according to how the companions knew him. According to how the companions knew him. Saw him in his, in his, true, in his true appearance. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is an indication of the importance of learning about al-shama'il and nabawiyya about al-shama'il and nabawiyya the prophetic appearance and, and, his, and, and the way that he looked and his build and the, and the way that he, uh, of his structure and his color and his height and the likes like the sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in order, in order to know if one uh, saw him or not in a dream. Because some people, they claim they saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a dream and then when you ask them to describe him, they'll say, oh, he didn't have a beard or he was very short or he was very tall or they saw that they saw the Prophet in a dream, he had one hand. All of this is lies, and this is not the Prophet, rather this is Shaytan, Wariyadu Billah. The one who sees the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a dream is the one who's seen him as described by the companions. And he, that in his true form, and the way that he was created, the way that he was alive, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and his shape and his appearance, whenever he was alive, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, again, here's uh, another indication of the piety uh, and the fear of Allah. 
uh, that was in the heart of Abu Khari rahimahullahu ta'ala. He said that he said one, oh, it's mentioned that he said one time, the Abi uh, Ma'ashir al darir He said to a man, his name is Abu, Na, Abu Ma'ashir, and he was blind. He was a blind man. One time he came to him and he said, Ij'alni fi hil, ya Abu Ma'ashir. He said, oh, Abu Ma'ashir, forgive me, pardon me. Pardon me, put me in hil, anywhere I will not be held accountable with regards, with regards to you. So, so he said to him, Min ayy shay? And he, well, pardon, you from, pardon you from what? Now he said, قَالَ رَوَيْتُ يَوْمًا حَدِيثًا فَنَظَرْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَقَالَ عُجِبْتَ بِهِ وَأَنْتَ تُحَرِّكُ رَأْسَكَ وَيَدَكَ فَتَبَسَّمْتُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَقَالَ أَنْتَ فِي هِلْ رَحِيمَكَ اللَّهِ يَا بَعْدِ اللَّهِ Abu Khari, he, told, he, he asked him, why, why should I pardon you? And Bukhari, he says, one day I narrated a narration and I looked at you and you thought that it was very amazing. And you started rolling your head and moving your head around and moving your hand. So I smiled at that whenever I saw you. I smiled at that whenever I saw you. And uh, so he says, Verity, you're pardoned and you're free of blame. Oh, Abu Abdullah, may Allah have mercy on you. May Allah have mercy on you. And he meaning that he remembers this affair that even one time maybe any this is something that that meant he did not know about. But he was uh, afraid that he would be held accountable for that. And that this is something that was in the right of that man. And uh, that he had done something that is not befitting with regards to him. And therefore he informed him and asked for, for pardon and, and for forgiveness for this. And he, so this is something, and he, meaning that it would bother his heart. And he, so the need to harm a believer is something that should bother the heart uh, of a Muslim. To bother the heart of a Muslim. With regards to the affairs of harming the believers. Abu Khari, he says, Rahimahullah, ma akeltu kurratha qat, wala al qana bara. Kultu wadima dharika. And he has mentioned that he, he told one of his companions, I never ate the, the kurratha ever, any of the leeks. And uh, another uh, another type of herb likewise called al qana bara. And he kultu wadima dharika. They said, Why not? You never ate these type of herbs, any of these herbs that have a bad and foul odor whenever you eat them. He said, Kirihtu an udiya man ma'iya min, min natiniha. He said, because I did not like to harm those who were along with me from the foul odor. And I didn't want that foul odor to come from me and harm those people who were along with me. So I never ate that. He said, like that. The raw onions also, you never ate those? He said, right, like, 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 like that. No, I never ate those. And this is something that's halal and permissible for a person to eat. This is his decision that he, that he made. If he's uh, accompanying people, for example, a lot, and he, we know that Bukhari, he's traveling. He's traveling a lot, and, uh, and he did not like and he to harm the people. So even from that, is that he would not eat this food that would leave a foul odor on him until he harmed the people from his odor. Until he harmed the people from, uh, from his odor. Rahimahullahu ta'ala. Here he says uh, about uh, Al-Farabri again. He says, Kuntu jalisan ma Abi Abdullah fi Abi Farabr. في مسجد فدفعت من لحته قذات مثل الذرة أذكرها يعني one of the mention he said I was sitting with Abu Khari رحمه الله in the masjid in Farabr and he had a small a, a small speck of something in his beard so I wiped it away so I wiped it away فأردت أن ألقيها في المسجد I wanted to just throw it down in the masjid and he so Abu Khari رحمه الله he says ألقيها خارجا من المسجد he said throw it outside of the masjid Throw it outside of the masjid. Don't just take it and throw it down in the masjid. I and mean, this is something that uh, will harm the people. If there's trash and there's things laying in the masjid, even today we see some people, they'll cut their nails and throw it in the masjid right there. And then you will not realize that it's there until it's uh, in front of you whenever you're making sujood. This is harmful for the people. Wallahi, this is harmful for the people. Somebody makes sujood and he, and he lifts his head up and he has a fingernail stuck on his head. I and mean, this is something that harms the people. And how about any aspect? And so Bukhari, he's like uh, thinking about these affairs, not harming the people. Don't throw that on the ground, throw it outside because maybe it will harm somebody. And it's stuck on my beard, maybe it's going to stick on somebody else's beard also. And he get rid of it and throw it. Throw it outside. This is something a believer, he takes into consideration. And he, plus this is the house of Allah. It'll just throw things uh, uh, on the floor and leave things on the floor and leave bottles and trash and paper and pencils and, and fingernails and the likes like this. This is not, this is not befitting. This is not befitting. Uh, they mention here uh, many, many narrations. I want to try to finish this tarjama, but it's, it, it, it keeps going and going. 
it keeps going and going, and we, and, and we begin reading, so we have to yeah, read what we can. May Allah make it easy. May Allah make it easy. He says here, Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala, at one time, one time he says, Kharajtu uh, ila Adam ibn Abi Iyas, fatakhalafat anni nafakati, hatta ja'altu atanawul al hashish. ولا أخبر بذلك أحدا فلما كان اليوم الثالث أتاني آت لم أعرفه فناورني سرة دنانير وقال أنفق على نفسك البخاري he mentioned uh, and he's showing his uh, his diligence to, to seek knowledge he left out to meet one of the mashaykh to go in search of knowledge from Adam ibn Abi Iyas he said on my way there and when I, whenever I went there my, I ran out of money I ran out of money until the extent I started eating grass, and I didn't tell anybody about that. I didn't tell anybody about that. I didn't inform anybody of my situation until after three nights of doing this, somebody suddenly came to me out of nowhere. I don't know who he was, and he gave me a bag of money, and he told me, spend it on yourself. And he told me, spend it on yourself. SubhanAllah. And that he was and he's shy, and he was chaste. And even whenever he was in need, he would not and he refrained from from this affair, and then how Allah Azza wa Jal provide, provide from where one cannot, one cannot perceive, where one cannot perceive. It's mentioned here uh, about him that they said, "Kana uh, Muhammad ibn Ismail, rahimahullah, maqsusan bi thalathi khisal, ma ma kana fihi min al khisal al hamida." That Al Bukhari rahimahullah, he was given three special qualities along with the rest of the praiseworthy qualities that he had. And he had many praiseworthy qualities, but three of them that were the most spe special and specific, and he was known for them. He says, Kana qaril al karam. Kana qaril al karam. He was not always talking, and he, he, spoke, he spoke only a little. And he from the affairs of the world. And he, he's not always talking. And not always talking. And he did not used to desire what the people had. He did not want the people, what, what the people had. And the dunya that was in the hands of the people, he was not looking for that or desiring that. And he was not also busy with the affairs of the people. So and so is doing this and so and so is doing that. He, he wasn't busy with his affairs. He wasn't busy with what the people are doing. He wasn't hoping to have the money the people have or the wealth and prosperity that's in the hands of the people. And he didn't and he busy himself talking about this affair a lot. What did they say about him? That all of his devotion and all of his effort, all of his time, it was in knowledge. All of his time, it was in knowledge. And he, that this is, what, this is all that he did. This is all that he did. We've seen that before, and he, the examples of that, that he would, be, he would be with the people and he would not be occupied with them whatsoever, whether they would be having fun enjoying themselves on an excursion and he would be seeking knowledge and he would be reading books and he would be diligent in, in, in this manner. This is how he was his whole life. Rahimahullah until, ta'ala, until, until, he, was, uh, until he, was, he was known for that. Until he was known for that. Al-Dhahabi, uh, he mentions now, he says, Dhikru karamihi. This is the mention of his uh, of his generosity and his uh, kindness and his descriptions and other than that, he mentioned uh, some narrations and he says uh, about Muhammad ibn Abi Hatim al Raq uh, that he said I heard Bukhari saying, Rahimahullah kuntu astaghilu kull shahrin khamsa miyati dirham. He said, every month I used to get 500 dirham. Every month I used to get 500 dirham. And he has a, has a provision. And I spent all of that in seeking knowledge. I spent all of that in seeking knowledge. And, uh, and I spent all of that in seeking knowledge. And a person and he who has this fervent desire, he will literally do that. He will spend everything he has in seeking knowledge, his very last breath. We have seen examples of that in the Salaf. And he, so he was uh, known for this matter. Like how it's mentioned about him that you know, there was an individual who owed him thousands of, uh, 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 of the Nanir, and he lost of wealth, lots of wealth, and he was dodging him. 
and Bukhari, he kept uh, delaying him and pardoning him and forgiving him. And whenever the people would hear about it, that, they, that he owed Bukhari, they would try to take re retribution for him. And they would try to, to write to the, to the ruler for him. And he, if he was in that town, Bukhari came to that town, the man that owed him, he would flee and he would run. So the people, any uh, Bukhari's companions, they, they didn't like that. So they said, let's write to the, he went to so-and-so uh, town. Let's write over there to them and have him hold him. And then Bukhari says, nobody touch him. Nobody touch him, let him go and leave him. And he, he was very kind and pardoning, and he pardoned him in this, in this manner, in the life like this. And he, rahimahullah wa ta'ala, he was not any after the, after the people and the wealth of the people. Rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentions here, uh, this is now coming to the end of the life of Al-Imam Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala. At the end of his life, he went to Naysabur. He went to Nesabur, and in the, whenever he made his trip there, uh, he had a great, great gathering. And it's mentioned that whenever he came there, Rahimahullah ta'ala, all of the scholars of Nesabur, and all of the virtuous people, and all of the people of knowledge, they came out, and they left the town, and they greeted him, yani, far from the city. They, they traveled outside of the town, to, whenever they heard that he's coming, to meet him there, and he had a great, uh, a great, uh, many a mass of people meeting him and happy to see him and uh, the lice and at this time in Naysabur one of the people of knowledge was there his name is Muhammad ibn Yahya al-Zuhri and he is from the peers of Bukhari and also even and he from the, the Mashaykh of Bukhari he's, they, they, they're very close but he's also and he from the most knowledgeable of the scholars of Hadith of those days it's, we, we read previously that he was asking him questions al Zuhari was asking Bukhari questions and he was going through them like he's reciting Qul huwa Allahu Ahad and this was the same individual. They mentioned about Muhammad ibn Yahya al Zuhari that in Naysabur he was like Ahmed in Baghdad or he was like Malik in Medina like that's, with regards to the Sunnah and he was known for being staunch and stern upon the Sunnah and, and, and with knowledge and with narration and defending the Sunnah and he was harsh on the innovators likewise. Muhammad ibn Yahya al Zuhari is from the, the scholars of Hadith He's from the scholars of Hadith. Whenever he, he, he was there, he told the people, all of his students, whenever Bukhari comes, we're going to go meet him. We all go meet him. We all go meet him. So they all went out to meet him. And then after that, and he, sometime, the, the people, whenever he, Bukhari was in Nisabur, he started having gatherings of knowledge. And at this time, uh, all of the people advanced and hastened to Bukhari. And the gathering of Muhammad ibn Yahya al Zuhali started becoming lighter and lighter. And the people left his gathering and they went to the gathering of Bukhari until it was noticed. Until you can see that the, the, the students in his gathering became less and became fewer. And the people of Nan, as I mentioned here at this time, that, that uh, al Zuhali rahimahullah, he was tried with, uh, with jealousy. And there were affairs that occurred between the two of them. And uh, the foundation of that was because of, of jealousy. And uh, then uh, they had some people come to cause problems in the gathering of Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, and they asked him about, about some issues about uh, the, the, the love, the love and the, the recitation of the Qur'an as it created. And Bukhari, he turned away from him and he didn't answer. And, he, and then they're trying to get him to talk about this affair. And uh, Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that the Qur'an is a speech of Allah and it's not created. And then whoever says that the Qur'an is created, then he's a disbeliever. And this was the affair, and this was his belief. But then they asked him about any of the recitation. And uh, Bukhari, he told them, and he said uh, that uh, to uh, the Qur'an is the, is the speech of Allah, and it's not created. But the actions of the, the people is created. And uh, the recitation that one recites and he, with his tongue, then the, this is created. And the people, they, they, they misunderstood that. And they claim that he said that the Quran, the recitation of the Quran is created. And the likes like this, and they lied on him. And uh, coupled with that, the jealousy that was between him and his peer, they caused much corruption and hardship, yani for al Bukhari. So, al Dhahabi, he's mentioning this affair. He says, uh, uh, he says, Rahimahullah uh, ta'ala, Abu Ahmad ibn Adi. Ibn Adi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned, ذكر لي جماعة من المشايخ أن محمد بن إسماعيل لما ورد نيسابور اجتمع الناس عليه وحسده بعض من كان في ذلك الوقت من مشايخ نيسابور لما رأوا إكبار الناس إليه 
واجتماعهم عليه فقال لي أصحاب الحديث إن محمد بن إسماعيل يقول لفظ لفظ اللفظ بالقرآن مخلوق فامتحنوه في المجلس يعني فلما حضر الناس مجلس البخاري قام إليه رجل فقال يا أبا عبد الله ما تقول في اللفظ بالقرآن مخلوق مخلوق هو أم غير مخلوق فأعرض عنه البخاري ولم يجيبه فقال الرجل يا أبا عبد الله فعاد عليه القوم فأعرض عنه ثم قال في الثالثة فالتفت إلى البخاري وقال رحمه الله القرآن كلام الله غير مخلوق وأفعال العباد مخلوقة والامتحان بدع فشغب الرجل وشغب الناس وتفرق عنه وقعد وقع البخاري في في منزله في منزله يعني so يعني they tried to uh, test him and try him with the safir and to get him to slip into falling uh, into the issue uh, of claiming that the Quran is is created but he did not say that or that the recitation of the Quran is created and this is also not what Al Bukhari he mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala but they accused him with that they accused him with that so Bukhari he made a difference and he, the, the, the Quran itself and, and that which is recited this is the words of Allah this is the words of Allah that he spoke subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is not created and this is not created but as for the voice of the reciter and the action of reciting and the lips and the likes like this this is from the actions of the slave and the slave he is created and the recitation that he recites and he, with his tongue and the voice that comes from his mouth this is created but as for that which is recited it's not created it's not created as for that which is recited the words of Allah Azza wa Jal that was heard by Jibreel alayhi salam this is not created this is not created and the words they are ascribed to the one who said it first the words they are ascribed to the one that said it first. So these words here, the Quran, they're the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. He spoke them. He spoke them and with, with words and Jibril, he heard them. Uh, alayhi salam and conveyed them to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and conveyed them to us. So the one who says the the love, the uh, the love, yani the, the recitation uh, of the Quran is is, is created, then uh, this statement here, it has two aspects. And he, the one, from one aspect, it could be falsehood. From the other aspect, it, be, it could be correct. So they tried to consider Bukhari mentioning that, that, it was, that, 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 he, under, that he meant the, the, the incorrect meaning. And he, to, to say the love means either the, 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 the Quran itself, the recitation, or the, the sot of the reciter. So the people of knowledge, they clarify and they mention that Bukhari, he was right. And they say that with regards to the Quran, the Quran is the speech of Allah and it's not created. So the Quran, Kalam Allah, the Al Quran, Kalam Al Bari, was Sotu, Sotu Al Qari. That the Quran is the speech of the Creator. The Quran is the speech of the Creator. As for the voice, this is the voice of the reciter. The voice of the reciter. You understand that? So they tried to uh, find fault with him in this affair and they misunderstood him coupled with desires and uh, they caused much harm for Al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala until uh, Al-Dhuhari, he mentioned that whoever, whoever sits with Bukhari, don't sit with me. Whoever sits with Bukhari, it's not allowed for him to sit with me. And then he uh, had uh, mentioned uh, and began warning from Bukhari in a great manner until he until Al-Dhuhri, he mentioned that I'm not able to live in this in the same I'm not I'm not I'm not able to live in this uh, in, in this city with that man and he until and he meaning that basically yeah he that you know, they're going to have to get rid of him so Bukhari he left and he fleed and he fleed and it was much uh, fitna and trials that occurred for him and uh, Al-Dhuhri, he had riled up the people against him and he was claiming that Bukhari had opposed the Sunnah and that Bukhari claimed that the recitation of the Quran is created and he did not claim that. Rahimahullah ta'ala, they mentioned this uh, fabrication against him and many of the people of Malaz, they mentioned that the, the source of this was jealousy, was jealousy between peers, even though they also confess to the great virtue of Muhammad ibn Yahya al but this is something that occurs sometimes between uh, between peers wallahu al musta'an so bukhari he left he left and he was afraid and he and he left out from from nisabur and basically he was ran from there and he went to bukhara and he to his home and whenever he got to his homeland he was there for some time and then he had other trials there likewise and it's mentioned that whenever he was in bukhara whenever he was in bukhara rahimahullah ta'ala 
that, uh, that they asked him, the ruler there, the ruler of Bukhari, he was also a Dhuhri. He had the same tribe as Muhammad ibn Yahya. And the likes like this, he asked him to come to his house and uh, to uh, teach his, his children. And Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was very, uh, he was very uh, diligent with regards, uh, with regards to, to the knowledge and with regards to respecting the knowledge. So whenever, they, uh, whenever he asked, he's now in Bukhara. So the ruler is telling Bukhara, come, come to my house and, and recite Sahih Bukhari to me. Come to my house and recite uh, Tariq uh, al-Kabir to me, and in my house. So uh, Bukhari, he says, and he, he sent a messenger to tell him this. So Bukhari, he told the messenger, أنا لا أذل العلم أنا لا أذل العلم ولا أحمله إلى أبواب الناس Bukhari, he said to the, to the messenger of, the, of, the, of the, you know, the, the, the ruler of that city, he said, I will never belittle the knowledge, and I will not carry it to the doorsteps of the people. And if you want to learn, if you want to learn, then come to me in my masjid or come to me in my house. If you want to learn, come to me in the gatherings in the masjid or come to me in my house. And if you don't like that, then you're the ruler. You can prohibit me from narrating and uh, I will obey you because you're the, you're the ruler. But I'm not going to belittle the knowledge and carry it, I don't carry it from, uh, from, from here and there and, and carry it to the house. And another, another narration has mentioned, and he will come and teach it to my children in my home. He said, I'm not going to specify nobody for this knowledge. This knowledge for, is for everybody. Everybody's going to get it in the masjid and the likes like this. So whenever this occurred, uh, the ruler, he did not like Al-Bukhari now. He had a problem with Bukhari likewise. And then Muhammad ibn Yahya, he wrote to the ruler as well. And he mentioned that uh, Al-Bukhari, he had uh, opposed the Sunnah. And he had mentioned that the Quran is created and they lied on him and the likes like this. Or they mentioned that he said that love the Quran is created. And he didn't say that. Rahimahullah ta'ala. But this is what was mentioned about him. So he was ran likewise. He was ran likewise from Bukhara. The, the ruler of uh, Bukhara, he told the people what had come to him from the message of uh, Muhammad ibn Yahya. And the people were like, we're not listening to that. We're never going to leave Bukhari. We're, we're, we're going to support him. And, and the likes like this. And then so he kicked him out of his land. He kicked him out of his land. So now he was chased out of his own home. And he headed to Samarqand. He headed to Samarqand. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Until any, he died there. Whenever he was 62 years old in the year 256, rahimahullah ta'ala. What has been mentioned about this affair, it's mentioned uh, al-Bukhari, he says, يعني, توفيا al-Bukhari laylat al-sabti, laylat al-fitr, عند الصلاة العشاء, ودوفنا يوم الفطر بعد الصلاة الظهر, سنة ست وخمسين ومية, وعشة اثنتين وستين وستين سنة, إلا ثلاثة عشر يوما. Al-Zahabi, he mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, that al-Bukhari, he died on uh, the night of Saturday, and later to Sept, and this was uh, the night of, of Eid al-Fitr, and the night uh, of Eid al-Fitr, after Salat al-Isha. And he, so what day was that? The first night of Shawwal. So he was born in Shawwal, rahimahullah ta'ala, he died in Shawwal. He was born in Shawwal and he died in Shawwal, rahimahullah ta'ala, in the first night of Eid al-Fitr after Isha. Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he died and, uh, and he was buried the next day after Salat al-Dhuhr on Eid al-Fitr. And he was buried, rahimahullah, and he was 62 years old in the year 256. In the year 256, it's mentioned about him that uh, whenever he was on his way to Samarqand, that uh, he, some, he was very sick. He became very sick. He became very sick, rahimahullah ta'ala, and, uh, and he was making dua a lot. And uh, yeah, he, uh, he was uh, in much hardship and difficulty from what he was experiencing from the people and how they were throwing him out of the land, and he's traveling through the land in this manner. Uh, and the likes like this, and then he, beca he became very sick, and the people were helping him uh, to get onto his animal in order to head to a Samaqand. And then he said, and he, it's mentioned that they said he said to them, and he back up, back up, leave me alone, I said, I feel very weak. He said, I feel very weak. And then he said uh, about him, he started supplicating and making dua, and then he laid down and he died like that. And he died right there, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. They mentioned some amazing affairs about him that he, that he became sweating. 
he began sweating uh, uh, tremendously. Even after he was dead, he continued sweating until he was buried, until he was covered in his uh, in his uh, in his kefin, rahimahullah ta'ala. But they buried him and they prayed on him uh, on the day of Eid, on the day of Eid, Eid al-Fitr, rahimahullah ta'ala. It's been narrated from Abdul Wahid ibn Adam at Tawawisi. Rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, uh, this is also in Tariq uh, Tariq Baghdad. Uh, it's mentioned here, رَأَيْتُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ فِي النَّوْمِ وَمَعَهُ جَمَاعَةٌ مِنْ أَسْحَابِهِ وَهُوْ وَاقِفٌ فِي مَوْضِعِ He said, I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم at one time in a dream, and he had a number of his companions, a group of his companions with me, and they're standing in this place. فَسَلَّمْتُ عَلَيْهِ فَرَدَّ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ He said, so I gave him salam, and he gave me the salam back. فَقُلْتُ مَا مَوْقِفُكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So he said, I said, why are you standing here, O Messenger of Allah? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قَالَ أَنْ تَذِرُ مُحَمَّدِ بِنْ إِسْمَعِيلِ الْبُخَارِ He said, I'm waiting for Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari. And in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in this man's dream, he's seen this. And this is what he said. He said, I'm waiting for Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari. So the man, he mentioned, فَلَمَّا كَانَ بَعْدَ أَيَّامِ So after this was after some days, بَلَغَنِي مَوْتُهُ فَنَظَرْتُ فَإِذَا قَدْ مَاتَ فِي السَّاعَةِ يَلَّتِي رَعَيْتُ نَبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ فِيهَا He said, it reached me after some days that Al-Bukhari, he had died. And I looked and it was at the same time that I had the dream. It was the same time that I had, that I had the dream. Again, the dream, يعني, the, it's a good sign. It's a good sign for a person, but still a person, يعني, will not uh, say about anyone, so-and-so is in Jannah, or so-and-so is in the Nar, except for that which has been established and affirmed in the authentic texts. But somebody would say about Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, and the rest of the, the scholars of the Sunnah, that is hope that he is in Jannah, that is hope that he is forgiven, that is hope that he is pardoned. And we would say likewise that we hope that we will be with them, that we hope that we will be with them. And verily, amen. A person he will be with the one he loves. He will be with the one that he loves. And it's whenever he heard this, radiallahu anhu, he said, We'd never rejoice over anything the way that we we rejoice over this. Verily, I love Abu ba- I love the Messenger of Allah and Abu Bakr and Umar, even though I cannot reach their status and actions. And we say the same thing as Anas radiallahu anhu. Verily, we love the Prophet and Abu Bakr and Umar and all of the companions and the scholars of hadith, and we hope that we will be with them, even if our actions do not reach reach their level, even if our actions do not reach the level of their, of their actions. From the poetry of Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, he mentioned, اِغْتَنِمْ فِي الْفَرَاغِ فَضْرَ رُكُوعٍ فَعَسَى أَنْ يَكُونَ مَوْتُكَ بَغْتَى كَمْ صَحِيحٍ رَأَيْتُ مِنْ غَيْرِ سُكْ مِنْ ذَحَبَتْ نَفْسُهُ صَحِيحَةُ فَغْتَى يعني اِغْتَنِمْ اِغْتَنِمْ فِي الْفَرَاغِ فَضْلًا رُقُوعٍ Take advantage of your free time by worshipping Allah with non-obligatory actions of worship. يعني this is the meaning of that. فَعَسَ أَنْ يَكُونَ مَوْتُكَ بَغْتَى Because maybe your death can come suddenly. Maybe, and you take advantage of your time in obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal because possibly death will come to you suddenly. He says, كَمْ صَحِيحٍ رَعَيْتُ مِنْ غَيْرِ سُكْمٍ ذَهَبَتْ نَفْسُهُ صَحِيحَةُ فَلْتَى He said, how many uh, healthy people I have seen with no sickness whatsoever, their uh, healthy souls were taken suddenly. Their healthy souls were taken suddenly. And not everybody gets sick and dies. Some people, they die suddenly while they're healthy. Well, some, some people will be the healthiest of the people, and, and their souls will be taken from them. And he with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. So therefore, this is a beautiful advice, that a believer take advantage of his time uh, in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, Al-Bukhari, he mentioned in some lines of poetry, Ibn Hajar, he, he collected these in his book called uh, in the Introduction of, of Fath al-Bari. خَارِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ وَاسِعٍ وَلَا تُكُنْ كَلْبًا عَلَى النَّاسِ تَحِرٍ He said, deal with the people, treat the people with good and vast and noble manners, and do not be a dog barking and growling at the people. And do not be a dog barking and growling uh, at, the, at the people. We will read one last uh, narration that it was mentioned from Bukhari while he was teaching one of his uh, one of his students, and he, this was also from uh, Muhammad ibn Abbas al Farabari. He says, "Wamla alayya yawman, wamla yawman alayya hadith kathira." One day, Al Bukhari he narrated to me a number of narrations, many narrations. 
فَخَافَ مَلَالِي So he is afraid I'll become tired and get bored. فَقَالَ طِبْ نَفْسًا فَإِنَّ أَهْلَ الْمَلَاهِ فِي مَلَاهِهِمْ He said you should have a good, you should enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Realize what you're doing. He said the, the people of entertainment, they're in their entertainment. وَحْلُ الصَّنَاعَاتِ فِي صَنَاعَاتِهِمْ And the people of manufacturing, they're in their manufacturers. وَالتِّجَارِ and the people of business and trade, they're in their business and their trade. And you, you're with the Prophet and his companions.